Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Dan Penny. I'm the Chief of Cardiology here at Texas Children's Hospital. The coronavirus pandemic has certainly thrown a lot of things across us. Something that we've noticed recently is this new multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which appears to occur in children after coronavirus infection. You may have heard this referred to as Miss C. Understandably, this is very worrying to parents and we've received many questions and concerns from them about Miss C. So we thought we would make this video together in order to address at least some of these questions. I'm joined here today by Dr. Larry Shekademian, who's the Chief of Critical Care at Texas Children's Hospital. Lara has recently been the lead author on a major paper looking at coronavirus infection in children in intensive care units across the United States. I'm also joined by Dr. A.L. Muscal, who's the Chief of Rheumatology here at Texas Children's Hospital. And he's an expert in inflammatory conditions in children. So both Lara and A.L. are leaders in the multidisciplinary task force that we have here at Texas Children's Hospital to make sure that we provide the best care possible for these children with MISC. So Eyal, a question that has been asked of us a lot is, what are the early signs and symptoms of Miss C? And many of our parents ask us about whether there's anything they should be looking out for in the early stages. Based on experiences in Europe and the East Coast, so the places in the world that have had a head start on us here in terms of the multi-system inflammatory type of syndrome, it appears as if kids often have unrelenting fever that doesn't really respond to traditional anti-inflammatory measures. And then usually a, a variety of other problems such as abdominal pain, vomiting, inability to keep fluids down, and then usually uh, a variety of issues like rash, sometimes red eyes, and a general appearance of uh, ill appearance. Um, it appears that those are some of the early symptoms. As the child's become more ill, perhaps uh, he, will, uh, have, uh, he or she will have chest pain or have more difficulty with their breathing. So Al, another question that has come up is um, families wanting to know how common MISC is in children. Also, how long does it last and how serious can it actually get? It appears that MISC is pretty uncommon, actually rare according to some of the other cities that have had cases uh, for a longer period. Um, some of the experts in New York City believe that less than 1% of the children that actually are exposed to the coronavirus uh, and get COVID-19 seem to develop this more serious post-infectious process. Um, it can last uh, for days or even a couple of weeks as kids recover from it. Uh, it appears to be in many cities with more cases that most of the cases uh, are treated quickly and uh, are not that serious, though there are kids that end up in the intensive care unit uh, and unfortunately exceptionally rare kids that pass away. So Eyal, another, another common question is, is this just a disease of children? What ages are most typically affected? And how old are the oldest children who do get MISC? So again, with the last six weeks of knowing more about this condition, it appears that even if children have some of the features of another entity called Kawasaki disease, they appear to be a little bit older, so perhaps even teenagers that are getting this, whereas Kawasaki disease is usually a disease of early childhood. Uh, it does appear that perhaps young adults can also have features of this syndrome. Unfortunately, many adult physicians have never seen Kawasaki disease, and it could be that they're not aware of some of these signs and symptoms. So Dan, as the chief of cardiology who takes care of many children with underlying illnesses, does it seem to be that uh, children uh, with underlying illnesses are more prone to get MISC? Thanks, Al. So that's a question that we're often asked. We don't believe that this condition is more common in children with pre-existing conditions. So what it seems to be is that a child gets a coronavirus infection and then they get this overactive immune response to the infection. Uh, and that's what results in this syndrome. And so this does not appear to be more common in children who have underlying diseases such as congenital heart disease. So Dan, if, if a child has congenital heart disease, let's say a relatively simple defect like an ASD or even something more complex, 
are they going to be at higher risk of getting MISC? And particularly parents want to know if their child might have a worse outcome than a child without heart disease. So thankfully, Lara, we haven't seen any patients with congenital heart disease who've developed MISC in our hospital, and I think it's quite rare throughout the world. I don't see any reason to believe why children with congenital heart disease would be at more risk of developing this syndrome in the first place. And also if you have well compensated heart disease, I also don't believe there should be any particular risk to a patient if they did happen to get the condition in the setting of congenital heart disease. Um, so Dan, as a cardiologist, you're obviously an expert in taking care of kids with Kawasaki disease. What is the difference between MISC and Kawasaki disease? And does this new syndrome seem to only affect kids who have COVID-19? So MISC refers to this syndrome that we see in children, particularly related to coronavirus infection. And that's according to the recent CDC definition, and this is really specific to coronavirus infection. But we do see similar conditions in other situations. Kawasaki is another disease that is one of these inflammatory syndromes. And Kawasaki disease, from a cardiologist's point of view, is most important because it, that is shown to attack the heart muscle itself and also the coronary arteries which are the big arteries that supply the heart muscle. What we see in patients with Kawasaki disease is that, that they get dilated coronary arteries. These abnormal coronary arteries are also seen in some patients with, with MISC. Typically though it doesn't seem to be as common in MISC as in Kawasaki disease. One of the other differences between MISC and Kawasaki disease is Kawasaki disease tends to be clustered in much younger children whereas MISC as we said earlier can affect young, older children and even adults. So Lara we've also been asked that now that since Texas Children's Hospital is seeing some of these patients now are there any trends that you're seeing? And another question that many parents ask us is or patients with MISC where are they being treated in the hospital? So we are seeing a steady stream of patients that are coming to presenting to Texas Children's to either rule out or confirm MISC. A classic presentation of COVID-19, we were admitting most of our patients to our special isolation unit at the West Campus. Obviously with MISC, there are some differences. For example, a majority, but not all the patients, are now negative for their nasal swabs for COVID-19. And the second difference is that there are often, but not always, other systems involved that occasionally require us to consider keeping the patients at the medical centre campus in case of the need for extra support. For example, intensive cardiology support. We will admit the patient, a child with, with MISC, to the right campus according to the spectrum of presentation. So Lara, since you're an integral member of our MISC uh, task force here and are aware of many of our patients, how many cases of this syndrome do you think we've had in Houston so far? And do you expect these cases to rise as they have in other cities on the East Coast? Good questions. We have seen a handful of patients with MISC at Texas Children's. We don't have an exact number because we obviously investigate many more than we end up diagnosing according to the strict criteria. It would certainly be less than 10. Um, and the question about expecting them to rise, it's a difficult one to answer. I think what we are seeing in terms of the density of MISC around the world, not just in the US, very much mirrors the density of primary COVID-19 infection in those cities. So luckily Houston was not hit anything like as badly or hard in terms of severe COVID-19 infection. I think that would really speak to the fact that while we're seeing patients present with MISC, it seems to be a steady number. We're not seeing a huge explosion. In Touchwood, we hope that's going to continue. So Lara, clearly this is a very, can be a very serious illness. If a patient comes to our hospital with MISC, I know that we're very strict right across the hospital in screening and testing and making people safe. 
But do you think patients who have MISC in general, are they still contagious with coronavirus? That's a really important question. Um, we believe that the majority of them will not be contagious at the time that they develop the MISC. The typical presentation is around the four week mark after a primary COVID-19 infection and the vast majority of children at that stage or um, anybody contracting COVID-19 would likely be non-contagious. Of course we do test them with nasal swabs as well as the typical antibody tests that are required to confirm um, the diagnosis. So I think it's reassuring to a point that most children are not contagious but we do screen them just in case they've still got signs of any active COVID-19 disease. So Lara, I think many of our families really want to know is it safe to send their kids back to daycare or school once those daycare and school entities are opening again? Well that's a million dollar question Al, and I think to be perfectly honest, there isn't a simple answer to that. Obviously, the opening of schools, daycare, summer camps is obviously very topical right now, is going to be at the, the decisions are going to be by local authorities or by regions. Um, a lot of people have asked me what I would do with my own child. Again, I don't think there's a simple answer. I think in terms of MISC, we do not have to worry about that being a primary cause uh, concern in terms of catching COVID from someone who has had MISC. But I think as long as COVID-19 stays in the community, we have to be hyper vigilant. What I would want to know before sending a child or a, a loved one to a school or daycare or a summer camp is what sort of screening the numbers of children or adolescents in a specific space the respect, hopefully, for social distancing, for hygiene, for hand washing, etc., and how they're going to screen any carers or any worth workers in those environments, I would hope on a daily basis, and feedback constantly to parents and to caregivers to reassure them and provide a constant, um, constant updates. So as yet, we still have a lot of questions about this condition and um, I'm really delighted that we have this task force now in our hospital and we're going to be able to provide more and more clarity in the weeks ahead. One of the only nice things about the difficult period we've gone through is that it brings families together, but it also brings together physicians, teams and their chiefs in terms of ensuring the safety of all our patients and that questions can be easily answered in a timely fashion. So I think that was a really useful session. We're really glad to be able to answer some of the questions um, that all our families have brought up. I'm sure as you listen to this discussion, each question that we answer will raise another 10 questions that we haven't yet answered. And for that reason, we encourage you to keep the questions coming. And if you're worried about your child or any child of somebody you know, please contact your Texas Children's Paediatrician or any other provider on our network.